Hey, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial here on my Rhodes Studio channel. This time it was her turn to produce a track in the style of Amelie Lenz. One would be hard pressed to find another artist whose meteoric rise parallels that of Belgium's most exciting new export, Amelie Lenz. She has, in a little more than a year, soared from relative anonymity to one of today's most in demand DJ producers the world over. Lenz's rise to the top may seem to have happened in the blink of an eye, but her work ethic, composure at the controls, crowd engagement and an incredible prowess in the studio have proven to be the perfect ingredients for her swift ascent to the apex of her trade. Let's start by telling you about the percussive elements I used for this production. I have this group called Drums Group where I have stored samples and loops to build the rhythmic pattern. The first element is the drums rack instrument where I have stored these five samples. Then I have this group where I integrate two sequencers. The first track is the main sequencer. If you see in the arrangement view, I don't have any audio or MIDI clips. The sequencer automatically generates the notes that we indicate from the device. What this MIDI effect of the sequencer is going to do is send the signal to the virtual instrument. Now I am going to give you a quick explanation of what I did with the sequencer in production but from a new project and that basically what I tried was to emulate a TB303. The first thing we are going to do is place the MDD snake MIDI effect on a MIDI track. I add the wavetable instrument. We have four configuration options in the sequencer. The first one is called notes where we will assign the pattern of notes that I want the sequencer to generate. We can even change the scale such as a chromatic scale. Now, what we have to do is design the pattern of notes that we want. I am going to reduce the steps that this sequencer generates to 8 steps. I'm going to translate the sine oscillator to a sawtooth oscillator. I'll change some notes on the sequencer. I'm going to lower the filter frequency. Now, I need to link this filter frequency with the amplifier envelope. For this I go to the matrix section, move the filter frequency knob until the matrix detects the filter frequency parameter. I'm going to increase the link to 50%. I enter the envelope of the amplifier to adjust some parameters. To get the characteristic of a TB303 I am going to increase the resonance parameter. Another of the MIDI sequencer options is that we can mute some notes, for example. We can even change the number of steps from 16 to 8 steps. We can also modify the speeds although here I keep it in the same configuration. In the custom tool of the sequencer it gives us the possibility of mapping instrument parameters or MIDI effects. For example, we map the parameter of warp. We decrease the number of steps from 16 to 8 steps. We can do a second mapping. For example, the filter parameter frequency.
Let's return to the production of the track in this tutorial. This was the setup I used on the MIDI sequencer. Notes, gates, velocities and custom where I am mapping the filter frequency parameter. In the audio effects I start with an equalizer where I cut with a high pass filter to remove low frequencies. With the overdrive effect I generate character and color to this instrument. With the amp effect I add a bit of weight to this sound. I add the effect of multiband dynamics where I generate compression differently for each frequency band. Again I added the EQ to boost the high pass frequency cutoff. Added an echo effect in ping pong mode. I have an audio effect rack where I have two audio effects stored. The first is a reverb and the second is a room type reverb. With this third EQ, its function is to modify the tone or color of this synthesizer. With the utility effect I reduce the stereo image. Now, something very important that I have to talk to you about is the automations that I used in this instrument. To see the visualization of the instrument automations, just click on the A key, this is the first sequencer. Here Ableton shows us all the automations that I designed. For example, the wavetable amplifier release, basically what I did was automate the envelope of the amp. I also have a filter on which is what activates and deactivates the wavetable filter. If you see the red dot on the filter trigger, this means that this parameter is automated. There are parts in production where I don't require the filter to be enabled. For example here. I have automated the wavetable transpose. In the second sequencer it's basically the same function as the first sequencer. What changes is that I use different form of the wavetable. In the audio effects I start with an EQ to select the frequencies that I want for the mix of this production. I add a saturator to give color and aggressiveness to this sequencer. Lastly, I add echo and reverb. For the synthesis of this sound I am going to use the wavetable called AEIOU from the formant group. Then I activate these two filters. I link the filter frequency parameter to envelope 2. Important to modify the resonance parameter of the two filters. If you notice there is a red dot in this parameter. This means that this parameter is automated. We click the A key and it will display the automations that we have made. In the audio effects I start with the amp effect. I add an EQ where I'm selecting the frequency range that I want. I added the phaser effect, compressor, 
Autopan, Reverb. Another EQ and the Utility. I'm going to activate each of the audio effects to hear each audio effect. In order not to make the video so long, I will show you other instruments of this production. We have reached the end of this video tutorial, remember that you can download this project on my Patreon page and gumroad.com.